This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can design your own book covers using Inkscape. And I don't just mean a book cover for an ebook, I mean an actual physical book cover that you would print and use on a book, as you can see here in the mock-up. Before we get started though, if you'd like to learn everything that there is to know about Inkscape, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. I'll have a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. Okay, so as you can see here, I've opened up the Kindle Direct Publishing. Uh, this is their, this is Amazon's print-on-demand service for uh, having your own books printed. Uh, I'll be showing you how to use this service here because this is the one that people most commonly use when they have books printed. In order to design your book cover with Inkscape, you first have to come here and download a template for the size of book you'd like to uh, print. So if you notice over here, we have all these different sizes to choose from. We have a page count to choose from, and we have color options to choose from for the paper as well. For this demonstration, I'll be showing you how to design a six inches by nine inches book with 200 pages in it with white paper. Now, if you go ahead and click the download cover template button, you should get a zip folder. And within that zip folder is a .png file that we will be working with in Inkscape. Okay, so getting started here in Inkscape, the first thing I want to do is just set up the documents that we all have a similar workflow here. I'm going to come up here and turn off snapping. I want to change the um, units of measurement to pixels. And then I will come up here to where it says view and make sure you have custom selected. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import that PNG template onto my canvas here by just clicking and dragging it onto the canvas like that. Now you can't see where this is coming from because I have this folder opened up on my other monitor, but if you take the .png file and click and drag it onto your canvas like that, you should get this little, uh, this little menu that pops up. And from these defaults here, we want to make sure we have embed uh, from image DPI, default import resolution, and for image rendering mode, none. And once you have those presets as they are, click OK, and it should import your image as you can see here. Now let me zoom out a little bit so I can see that a little better. You hold control, roll down the mouse wheel a couple of times. Okay, so there's our temp template. A couple of things about this template. This image right here represents the size that our document needs to be. So what I'm going to do is I want to resize the document so that it fits this image right here. Now if you notice, this is the document size right here as it stands. So in order to change that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the image and I'm going to press control, shift, and R on the keyboard. And that's going to change the document size to match the size of the selection there, as you can see there. A couple of more things uh, worth noting about this template. Over here, you'll notice this dotted line going around the edge of the image here. This dotted line represents the bleed cutoff. Once this document is printed, everything outside of this dotted line will be trimmed off. And then this pink area right here represents the safe area, meaning all of your contents of your design need to be away from this pink area. If you have any elements like text or imagery that touch this pink area or start to bleed out into that area, uh, Amazon will reject your book cover design. So that's something important to keep in mind as we're going through and creating this design. You want to make sure you keep everything in this white space in here. Now, as you can see over here on the right, we have the cover of the book, the front cover. Over here on the left, we have the back cover. And this right here is the spine of the book. Now, the way this works is this will be printed out as one entire document and then just wrapped around the book as a single, a single piece of paper. And then over here, we have the barcode. Now, when we're designing, we want to make sure we do not put anything over here. We do not need to put the barcode on the design ourselves. Amazon will handle that themselves. All we have to do is make sure that we leave this space right here free. So let me zoom out a little bit. Let me open up the Layers menu, which is located over here. You can also press shift Control l as a keyboard shortcut. And what I want to do is I want to rename this layer to Template. And I want to create a new layer by clicking the plus button over here. And I want to name this Contents. All of the contents, the design is going to be on this layer. I want to put this below Current and click Add. So we have the contents layer where the design is going to be, and then we have the template layer up here, which we're just going to use for a reference as we're creating our design. Now, instead of using this template right here, I'm just going to create some simple guides to make sure that I'm staying within these boundaries here. So the first thing I want to do is let me grab the rectangles tool, and I'm going to create a rectangle going over the white space right here of the back cover. And I want to give that an outline. Um, or a stroke. I'm going to hold shift and click on the color green to give that a, an outline. Let me remove the fill color. 
Let me grab this select tool. I'm going to be moving through these steps a little quicker than normal. This is going to be more of like an intermediate tutorial because um, there's a lot for me to go over in this lesson. So I'm not going to be explaining every single click like I normally do. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. Let me zoom in over here. I want to make sure I have this option up here disabled where it says when scaling objects, scale the stroke width by the same proportion. Have that turned off. And I just want to make sure that the edge of this green stroke is resting on the edge of this white safe space right here. There we go, looking pretty good. And again, to zoom in and out, holding control, rolling up and down the mouse wheel to move the page around, pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. I want to create another one going over this barcode right here. There we go. I'm going to grab the select tool, duplicate that by pressing control D. I'm going to move this over here like that. And then I'll create another one for the spine. Control D to duplicate it, move this one over here. There we go. And I'll just resize that to fit the, uh, I wanna make sure it fits the spine right there. Okay, looking pretty good. Okay, let me just zoom out. Okay, looking pretty good here. We've got uh, green strokes for all of the important areas. What I wanna do is I wanna select this image, the template, and I wanna right click it and go to copy. And then I want to turn off the visibility of the templates layer. I want to come down here to the contents layer and I want to create another rectangle. So just create a rectangle like that. Give this a fill color. I'm going to make this, as you can see in the thumbnail design, I made this book cover yellow with some white going through here. So I'm going to make this yellow the, cover I, the color I want the book cover to be. I'll make that yellow. Let me get rid of that stroke by holding shift and clicking the X. And I want to make this the same size as, as the template that we just copied. So to do that, let me go to edit, paste size, paste size, and it'll paste the width and height of that image like that. And then I just wanna align this on the uh, artboard here or the canvas. So let me open up the alignment menu over here. Control Shift A is the keyboard shortcut. And I'm gonna align this relative to the page. And I'm gonna put that on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. Okay, now we'll come back over here to the layers menu. Now that we have that in place, we can select the template layer, turn the visibility of that back on. And what I wanna do is take this template and we don't need this anymore. You could just press delete on your keyboard and get rid of that. And as you can see, we have the book cover design, which is the yellow rectangle with these guides in place to let us know where the important content should go and where we should not be putting any content. So let me lock this layer so that I don't accidentally move any of these guides as I'm designing. And there we go. Now I'm gonna click on the contents layer and now we are ready to start designing. So as you can see here, this book cover is yellow and I have some white in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that aspect of it real quick. Let me take this image right here and duplicate that by pressing Control D. And I'm gonna make this white and I'm just gonna scale this down like this. Kind of like that. Now I'm gonna grab my text tool and I'm gonna put some text in here. I'm gonna write how to create a... Now let me change the font. I'm gonna to go to text, text and font. And the font I'm looking for is Montserrat. Obviously, you can use whatever font you'd like. I'm just showing you how, to, how I created this specific design. I'm going to apply that font like that. Let me scale that up. I'm holding control while I scale to lock the proportions. Place this right about there. And I'm going to duplicate that. Control D. Bring that down there. And I'm going to change this to with Inkscape. And the text in the middle here is going to be a different font. Let me just make sure I have this centered up first. I'm going to select both of these, come back over here to the Align and Distribute menu, and set this to Last Selected, and just make sure I have that centered up like that. Now, if you notice here, I have a book cover design in the middle here with a different font. So I'm going to go ahead and create that next. Let me grab my text tool again. I'm going to write uh, book cover design. There we go. And let me change the font of that to... Serona. Make sure I have that centered. And I'm just going to scale that up as well. I'm actually going to move this out of the way. I want to make this, I want this title to take up the whole width of this, of this, uh, of this cover right here, just like that. Let me center that up on there. And let me just change this white stripe right here to accommodate the change in the size of the text like that. Let me move this up, move this up. Now, if you notice over here, I also have these little white stripes on the top and bottom of each of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate that, Control D, 
move this over here like this and just bring down the height of that and I'll just duplicate that and bring that up there and I want to make sure that all three of these white stripes are spaced out apart evenly so I'm going to hold shift and click on each of them come over here to the line and distribute and click on where it says make vertical gaps between objects equal there we go and now I just want to align my text again to make sure that it's aligned after that change right there and I'm just trying to make sure that this is centered like that I'm going to take this text and this text select them both and then center it up with this text just to make sure that everything is aligned in the center like that let me move that up there we go okay so what I'm going to do next is down here all of the secrets of book cover design revealed and then by author name let me add that text in there real quick And I'm going to give this text a little bit of a shear by uh, clicking on it again and getting these shearing handles just to make it look like it's italics because there's no italics version of this font. Uh, let me just do that. There we go. And I want to make sure I have that centered right there. There we go. And then down here, finally, I have by author name. This is where you put your author right here. So let me, I'm just going to use this text item right here. I'm going to duplicate that by author name and I'll make this one smaller because this one is less uh, less prominent there we go put that down there towards the bottom center that up I want to make sure I have everything centered up here so I'm gonna click on click and drag over all of that and make sure it's all centered up like that and I want to make sure it's all centered relative to the uh, page there and what I might want to do is just space things out vertically a little better so let me move this down let me move this down I'm gonna group all of this right here together I'm going to just press Control G to group that together like that. Move this down like this. Now, if you can see here, I have the um, the Inkscape logo up top there. So let me import that in here and, and place that real quick. Okay, so there we go. There's the Inkscape logo. And now I'm just going to select all of these objects. Or actually, you know what? Let me make sure I have this centered first. There we go. I'm going to select all of these objects. And I just want to space them all apart evenly vertically like this. There we go. And maybe move that up a little bit. All right, we're looking pretty good here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is the cover of the book is now finished. I'm going to work on the spine now. As you can see in the spine, I have the Inkscape logo, I have the author name, I have the title, and then I have some subtext over here. So let me add that in here. Let me put the Inkscape logo in there. I'm going to duplicate that by pressing Control D. I have to make this small. There we go. Put that right about there. And I'm going to put some text right here that says the author name. I'm going to just duplicate this text and move it over here and just rotate that around like that so that it fits in there. You may have to scale it down a bit like that. There we go. Now I'm going to put the uh, book title in this white space right here. So I'm going to duplicate. First, let me ungroup that. I'm going to duplicate this design right here. I'm going to duplicate this text right here and I want to put this text all on one line like that. Oops. Scale that down. Rotate that. Place this in here and scale this down so that it doesn't it doesn't touch the green edges right here. You want to make sure it's well within that safe area. And then just center that up. There we go, looking pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some subtext down here. Uh, let me just duplicate this. The secrets. I'm going to I'm going to abbreviate this text so that it doesn't take up too much space down here. The secrets of book cover design. Let's we'll see if that works. Okay, looking pretty good. All right, so now the spine is finished. The final step would be to work on the back cover of the book. So I'm going to put some text up there, some placeholder text in the middle, and then about the author uh, down there at the bottom. So we'll go ahead and get started on that. Uh, I have up here, learn how to design book covers. Okay, so I'm going to grab this text. I'm going to duplicate that. Put this over here. I'll make this a little smaller. Let me uh, change this. Learn how to... Did I have that on two lines or one line? Learn how to design book covers. Okay, learn how to design book covers 
Perfect. And I'll scale that down. And now I'm going to put some placeholder text in here, some lorem ipsum text. You would obviously want to write like a description of the book or something. This is just a tutorial, so I'm going to put some lorem ipsum text in there. I'll go to extensions, render, and actually no, extensions, text, and lorem ipsum. And I want to choose two paragraphs, six sentences per paragraph, and four for the paragraph. Like I'm just putting random numbers in here. Let me close out of that. And this text, pretty small. It got it was generated over here in the top left corner. So let me let me grab that, place this in here. Let me go to the text editor. Let me select the text with the text tool. And I want to change this to Montserrat. I'm going to make this uh, medium or semi bold, make this a little bigger, maybe 28. See how that looks. Maybe a little bigger than that. 36. Looking better. OK, that's good enough. I'll leave it at 36. I'll place this over here towards the top left. Again, making sure it's not it's not going anywhere near that green border. Let me go back to the text tool and I'm just going to take this little node right here and bring that in so that it forces the text within this area right here. And then I will center align that text. And just to, uh, let me bring this down a little bit. There we go. Just to make this look a little better, I'm going to add some spacing between these lines because something about this text right here is just not visually appealing. It just looks like a cluster of text. So I want to space this out a little bit. Let me grab the text tool, select that. And over here, uh, spacing between baselines. I'm just going to increase that. There we go. That looks a lot better. Okay, now down here, bottom left, we have about the author and some more lorem ipsum text. So let's go ahead and create that, and then we'll be done. So let me take this text. Let me duplicate that. And then I'll just take this text over here and just duplicate that. I'll put this down here. Let me go back to the text tool. I'm going to give this, I'm going to align this to the left. There we go. I'll bring this in like this. And I want to make this text smaller. This is less prominent. If you're following the rules of visual hierarchy here, this here is the most prominent. This is secondary. And then this is uh, down here, the, the least important text. Let me uh, shrink that down. Let me try 24. See how that looks. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to get rid of some of these lines of text in here so that it's not bleeding out into the, uh, the bleed cutoff. Um, there we go. And if you want, you could add like a little picture right here, a picture of the author and you know, whatever else you want to add in there. Okay, so the design portion of the book cover is finished. Okay, so how do we go from here to having an actual file that we could send to the printers and have printed? What we want to do first is come over here to the layers menu. And where it says template, we want to just turn off the visibility of that layer. We don't need that anymore. And what we want to do now is export this as a JPEG image. So we'll go to file and we'll go to export PNG image. It's labeled as PNG image, but it also allows you to export other formats such as JPG if you're working with Inkscape version 1.1 or later. So let's open up the export menu. And I want to leave all of the defaults as they are. The export area, we are exporting the page and just leave all of these defaults as they are and then just go ahead and click on export as. And when you click on that, it's going to, it's going to ask you to choose a location on your hard drive to save this file to. And it's also going to ask you to, it's also going to ask you to choose a file format. Now for this, probably a good idea to choose JPEG. So, um, yeah, whenever you're printing something, JPEG is always better than PNG. And, uh, once you save that file, you should be done. You should be able to take that file, that JPEG file that you've exported and upload it to, uh, Kindle Direct Publishing to have your book cover printed. So I think that should do it for this tutorial. That's how you can go about designing your own book covers using Inkscape. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.